I've been testing and using brain devices for the past 10 years, and these are my top picks for 2024. In this video, we'll discuss the best devices for focus, sports training, meditation, sleep tracking, exercise, stimulation, advanced neurofeedback, and brain computer interface development. And at the end, I'll give you a sneak peek at a focus tracker coming out that I think is going to rock the market over the next 12 months. Our first device was recently featured on Bloomberg for its focus training abilities. And I could show you what an FNIRS looks would, like. I would love to see what an FNIRS lo looks like. Now this, this one I use for focus. You can retrain your brain to have longer periods of focus and increase the activity in your prefrontal cortex, which is a form of cognitive enhancement. So you're trying to get this right. ball to go up. up. For focus training, I am still recommending the Mendy. It is my personal go-to device that I use every morning as a priming technique before my meditation and work sessions. I like to do at least 10 minutes right when I wake up first thing in the morning before I start the day. It's nice that it loads its training sessions right into my Apple Health app, which is a nice touch and gives me that extra little hit of dopamine right at the beginning of the day as an accomplishment. I've said this many times before, but I really feel that doing that priming session before my energetic meditation sessions helps me actually have a better experience. I recently made another Mendy tutorial, so you'll know what I'm talking about with this, and the link is in the description below. And I know the Mendy team is working very hard to fill out the app. They recently just added a new journaling feature and there's all types of useful tips and advice on how to use the FNIRS frontal lobe training to its fullest extent. And it's very competitive in price to most of the entry level brain devices here that cost around $300. So I like to use the Mendy as a primer for energetic meditations where I'm priming my focus to focus on a meditation object and bring energy into my sessions. But for a more relaxing and guided meditation experience for beginners, the Muse headband continues to deliver excellent neurofeedback meditation experiences. With all kinds of meditation tutorials, this app is robust and beautiful. They have a new brain age feature coming where you can assess the age of your brain based on your meditation and sleep sessions through the EEG data of the headband. And their digital sleeping pill for insomnia, I can tell you for a fact, will help you fall asleep quicker and assist with insomnia. I know because I've been using it for the past 90 days to compare it to Whoop and Aura, and there were a few nights where I had trouble falling asleep and put on the Muse headband, and it really helped lull me asleep, which was a very interesting experience. It has this audio like falling rain that goes in and out as you fall asleep in volume and it really lulls and soothes you asleep. It's just a fascinating experience. And with that sleep tracking comparison, I found it to be one of the most accurate sleep trackers in the entire market. And if you can handle a headband around your head and you're having trouble sleeping, I definitely would go for it. It also has very competitive pricing with these other entry-level brain devices. And if you want to get an advanced experience with the Muse headband, complete with a neurofeedback coach, brain mapping, and customized brain training protocols, don't forget to take a look at MindLift training. The MindLift system was recently featured in the Netflix special Quarterback, where Kirk Cousins was using the training to improve his gameplay. Over the past two years, I've run over 100 people through my MindLift training system called the Brain Circuit Training Program, but I'm no longer doing the program right now because I just want to focus on making videos for now. So instead, there's a link in the description below for you to get set up with one of their neurofeedback coaches if you're interested. If you want to take your entry level brain training to the next level, I highly recommend it. Speaking of sleep, I didn't fully realize how important sleep is to your brain health in general until I really started diving into the literature this year and read Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. One of the things I did this year was compare the Muse headband to the Aura Ring Sleep Tracker. And although I did find the Muse to be more accurate Accurate, the aura has been getting better and better with their algorithms to read the peripheral bio signals from your finger to give you good estimates on your sleep times and sleep stages. I will say that the Aura Ring is much more comfortable and easier to wear than the Muse headband. So if you don't want to wear a headband at night, but want to do instead a comfortable and stylish sleep tracking wearable ring, I would recommend the Aura Ring. I personally started going to bed 30 minutes earlier because of the data from the Aura Ring and its recommendations. And honestly, my energy and mood levels have never been better. For a more passive treatment of anxiety or sleep problems that doesn't take as much effort or consistency as neurofeedback, I'd recommend looking into the Pulsetto. This device was featured on Brian Johnson's Blueprint program, and I really enjoyed trying it out this month. 
it does direct electrical stimulation to your vagus nerve in your neck, which is painless and helps you relax your nervous system and improve your HRV. There is a little bit of tingling on your skin once the device revs up, which is similar to other direct electrical stimulation devices that I've tried in the past, but it was very tolerable. And I found the stress relief mode to relax me during the day, but not get me too drowsy when I wanted to get work done. But the sleep setting definitely helped knock me out at night. It does require this gel that you have to put on your neck, which is a mild inconvenience, but it is easy enough to wipe away with a paper towel once you're done. I'll be doing a lot more testing with this device this year to show how it affects my HRV, so be on the lookout for those videos in the coming months. For sports training, Focus Calm has a new app for golfers that was designed by none other than Rick Sessinghouse, Colin Morikawa's coach for the PGA Tour. They teach you this systemized process for preparing your golf swing, which is really cool. I think this device works best for sports like golf, where there's a systematic approach to the brain training that can be very beneficial in the sport itself. But for aerobic exercise, I'm actually going to go off the brain data path a bit. We have seen from some recent studies that exercise is as good or better than antidepressants for your mental health, because not only does your brain release endorphins when you exercise, the muscle tissue itself releases these myokines that people are calling the hope molecule that plays a role in regulating your mood and anxiety levels. A nice measurement that people have been honing in on for years in regards to aerobic exercise is heart rate variability or HRV. And we know that HRV is actually a good measure of your vagal tone, which in turn is a good indicator of how well you are able to rest, relax, and repair your mind and body when you are not in fight or flight mode. Typically, the more stressed out you are, the lower your HRV will be. And one of the best measurement devices on the market for HRV currently is the whoop strap. This is an awesome little wristband that you can wear in multiple places on your body. And I found it really effective for measuring my aerobic workouts, but then also the rest periods from day to day over several months. It will give you metrics on how high and low your HRV is, which helps guide your training frequency, which I found to be really useful as a long distance runner. It can also be a great motivator to get you out there and get your aerobic exercise, which will improve your HRV and help improve your mental health in turn. I think that the whoop strap is a better exercise monitor than the Aura Ring. They really have focused in on heart rate and heart rate variability as opposed to Aura Ring, which is a little bit more optimized for sleep. And the Whoop also integrates nicely with your Apple Health app and Strava Running app, which is a nice little touch. Switching gears a bit, if you are the creative type and you want to use brain computer interface for innovative projects like controlling mouse cursors, flying drones, or doing music with, Neurosity is just blowing people away this year. Earlier this year, the YouTuber Fireside had over a million views on this video when he connected his brain to ChatGPT through the Neurosity crowd. And a lot of musicians are waking up to this technology as well. Grimes and Pretty Lights have been incorporating the Neurosity crown into aspects of their live shows and brands, which is just amazing to see. Neurosity has this brilliant GitHub community with access to the software development kit and support for creating your projects. In addition, they have this focus enhancer called Shift that helps you focus with specifically tailored neuro enhancement music. And they actually just put this meditation app that has an AI generated version of my voice that will guide you through a meditation experience, which I think is an awesome addition to the whole package. If you are serious about brain computer interface wearables and you want to get involved on a deeper level to include access to the SDK and a community of developers that are creating innovative projects, the Neurosity is a little bit higher priced than the other entry level devices, but this may be the community that you need to get involved with to take your innovative projects to the next level. And for more advanced neurofeedback in a full package without a coach, I've been using the Sensei, and I must say that this is the most comprehensive neurofeedback consumer package without a coach coach that I've ever worked with. With advisors from famous organizations like 40 Years Zen, you know that the development team has put a ton of work into this device. 
I found the soundscapes to really shift my mental state when I use them. And the app has this whole voyage experience where you earn points as you go and has a sci-fi storyline along with it. If you are really into neurofeedback training and you want something that will occupy you for months and want something a little bit more advanced than the entry level devices, take a look at the Sensei. It is more expensive, but I would say that the infrared stimulation, the soundscapes, and just overall quality of the device, along with focus testing, is justified for someone that wants to put in a lot of time to their training and get something a little bit more advanced than the entry level gear. For virtual and augmented reality development, OpenBCI is leading the charge. They did an amazing presentation at TED this year where an individual in a wheelchair flew a drone with his mind. And another great device for people experiencing paralysis that hopefully can be included on insurance plans next year is Cognition. And I really enjoyed visiting their site in Santa Barbara and using the device to really see what interaction with AI with brain computer interface is gonna look like in the near future. And finally, for the 2024 focus tracker that I'm really excited about, it's the Neurable headphones. I should have my pair by February, and honestly, I can't wait to start testing it. Their co-founder Ramses has been doing all these demonstrations at Forbes 30 Under 30 and other conferences, and the demonstrations just look fantastic. Now, I've done some other focus tracking with devices like Emotive. I did find those headsets to be cumbersome. People wouldn't want to wear them in public. They have wet electrodes. What's great about the Neurable headphones is that you would be comfortable just wearing this in a coffee shop around your house. And I'm hoping that the focus algorithms are very robust and resistant to signal noise. If they can combine that amazing form factor of the headphones with reliability and an affordable price, I really could see these headphones going mainstream this year. So keep your eyes out for my videos coming out about Neurable in the coming months. I have so many video ideas for these headphones and I can't wait to make them. Just imagine using these headphones to track your productivity, focus, and flow. It's been an amazing year and I'm really looking forward to 2024. Let's not forget Nita Farinhani's book, Battle for Your Brain, which did such an amazing job this year of encapsulating everything that's going on in neurotechnology. If you wanna purchase one of these devices, I'd really appreciate it if you go through one of the links below where there's discounts for our Tech for Psych audience. It helps support this channel so that I can continue the most cutting edge information on brain computer interface technologies in the entire world. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you on the next one.